Brothers, how y'all doing the Sabbath day? Sisters, how are y'all doing? All right, all praises. Let's talk about Ezra in the end. All right, Ezra in the end. In dealing with why Israel goes through the things that we go through now, why we see in the news, uh, blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, highest unemployment, highest uh, uh, death rates, highest this, highest that. And then you see everybody else, and it's like, well, yeah, other nations are catching it, but why does Israel catch it more than everybody else? All right? Let's start off in... No, go to Matthews 24 first. Matthews chapter 24, verse 3. The book of Matthew, chapter 24, verse 3. Hold up. Brothers, y'all all right? Yeah. All right. I just had to make sure because when I said it earlier, uh, so I just want to make sure y'all good. All right. Matthew 24 and 3. Matthew, chapter 24, verse 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming? And of the end of the world. So the disciples said, what are the signs that we need to, <clears throat> excuse me, what are the signs that we need to look for to show and prove that it's the end of the world? Read. And Jesus answered and said unto them, take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And we see that in the world today, son of Christ, uh, uh, son of God, passion of Christ. Right? Esau setting himself up as God. Read. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But Christ said, don't be troubled because these things, they got to happen. These things must come to pass. Read. But the end is not yet. Uh -huh. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines. And pestilences. And, and pestilences, COVID-19, famines. You see food banks that have nothing or less than nothing and having to restock on a daily basis. You got lines for a mile, mile and a half, two miles with North Texas Food Bank and other food banks. Read. And earthquakes in diverse places. Uh -huh. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Christ said all of these are the beginnings of sorrows. Jump down to verse... 12. Verse 12. And 12, you're going to read 12 and 13. Mm -hmm. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. And because iniquity or sin would abound in the last days, it says what? The love of many shall wax cold. The keeping of the commandments of our people is going to grow cold. That's why mass murder, mass incarcerations, because the love of many has waxed cold amongst the nation of Israel. Read. But he, it says, but amongst everything else, in light of wars and rumors of wars, in light of troubles, in light of famines, in light of pestilence, read. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. But Christ said, for those of us that endure the affliction, endure the famine, endure the pestilence, endure the love of many waxing cold. He said, the same shall be saved. Now go to 2nd Ezra chapter 3. He said, the same would be saved. 2nd Ezra chapter 3. Hold up, let me get there. Start at verse. So Ezra had a lot of questions. If you read the book of, if you read the book of 2nd Ezra, and this is, Second Ezra is the fourth Ezra when you read Ezra, Nehemiah, first, second, first Ezra, second Ezra, excuse me. All right. So Ezra had a lot of questions for the Lord. Go to second Ezra chapter three, and we're going to start at verse 23. Second Ezra chapter three, verse 23. So the times passed away and the years were brought to an end. Then didst thou raise thee up a servant called David whom thou commandest to build a city unto thy name and to offer incense and oblations unto thee therein. What was the city that David was commanded to build? That was after the Lord's name. Uh, Officer Elior. Well, 
One more time with the question, sir. What was the city? Read verse 23 again. Verse 23. So the times passed away, and the years were brought to an end. Then didst thou raise thee up a servant called David. Verse 24. Whom thou commandest to build a city unto thy name. What was the city that God commanded David to build in his name? Uh, Jerusalem. That sounds good. Uh, uh, second uh Chronicles 6 and 6. What does that say? What does that say? Real quick, whoever got it first. The book of 2 Chronicles chapter 6, verse 6. But I have chosen Jerusalem that my name might be there. Mm-hmm. And have chosen David to be over my people, Israel. All right, very good. So that's the right scripture. All right. Uh, go back to Ezra. The book of 2 Ezra, chapter 3, verse 24. So when you read 2 Ezra 3, when you read it from the beginning, Ezra is recounting creation and how the Lord created Adam. He gave him the breath of life. He gave him the commandments. He gave him commandment to be over the earth and to be over all the people in the earth. All right. So we're starting in the middle for a reason. I won't I won't go through everything, but we're going to start in the middle of this. All right. Read on. Verse 24. Whom thou commandest to build a city unto thy name uh -huh. and to offer incense and oblations yes. unto thee therein and to sacrifice there. Go ahead. When this was done many years. So when this was done many years after the temple was built in Jerusalem, after the Lord said his name there, after we were sacrificing in Jerusalem, read. Then they that inhabited the city forsook thee. Who was the they that inhabited? And you just said out loud. Who was the they that inhabited the city that forsook God? You said out loud. The, I, I, who said North King? Okay, Jerusalem. Okay, explain. Yes, we. Yes, but in general. So I'm saying, uh, in general, the children of Israel, uh, prophetically, in the end, northern kingdom splitting away uh, under Rehoboam. Right, right. And the, the, the leaders of Israel started to forsake God. We all forsook God as a nation, all right? We all forsook the Lord as a nation. And certain parts in history, under Jeroboam and Rehoboam, is, uh, the northern kingdom forsook the Lord. The kingdom split under King Solomon. Uh all right, so read on. What verse you at? Verse 26. Read, read 25 again. Verse 25. Mm -hmm. When this was done many years, then they that inhabited the city forsook thee, mm -hmm. and in all things did even as Adam and all his generations had done. It said, and in all things did even as Adam and all his generations had done. Read. For they also had a wicked heart. For all the generations, all of creation after Adam had a wicked heart because Adam was commanded to teach everybody. All right, read. And so thou gavest thy city over into the hands of thine enemies. And so the lineage that came out of Adam, which was from Abraham to Isaac to Jacob to us today, God said in there, uh, so, uh, and so thou gavest thy city over into the hands of, the, of thine enemies. Why? Because of our own wicked hearts, because of our evil hearts. All right. Read verse 28. Verse 28. Are their deeds then any better that inhabit Babylon? So when it says, are their deeds then any better that inhabit Babylon? Who's the there? Don't yell out. Uh, uh, yeah, Zion. So there is us. No. No. Because we didn't have it Babylon. Talking about the heathen. Hmm? The heathen? Right. Use the word that it said. Babylonians? Use the it says in their deeds. Yeah, the Babylonians. It says, Are their deeds then any better that inhabit Babylon? So use the word that it referenced above. Uh, 
because Babylon had just destroyed Jerusalem during Ezra's time. Ezra was giving us, the Lord put the spirit on Ezra to give us our Bibles back that Edom had burned, right? Right. So he said, are their deeds then any better that inhabit Babylon? There is a word that was used in the verse above to explain the there. Because it's... I got it, I got it. What is it? Enemies. Enemies, right. Right. Enemies. Because we got, it was, more, it was more than just ancient Babylon at this time. Edom as well. Edom was the one that came in and started destroying Bibles. When you read, go to, uh, if I can find it, hold up. First Ezra's, just to prove that point, hold on. First Ezra's 8. Say something. It's very important. It's very important for us as the um, teachers of Israel to, to read to read and apply the scriptures. Because as I was saying earlier, we are examples. We are, we are examples of the Most High God through His Son, Christ. Uh, if we don't, if we don't um, teach our people, who else will? If we don't set the example, who else will? That's why Isaiah 34 and 16 says, seek out the book of the Lord and read. So when the, when the question is being brought forth, you already know where to go and how to answer it. First Ezra's four and forty-five. Just a, just a straight to the point. The book of First Ezra, chapter four and verse forty-five. Thou also hast vowed to build up the temple which the Edomites burned. You see that which the Edomites burned. Read when Ju when Judah was made desolate by the Chaldees. When Jerusalem was destroyed by the Chaldees. Who are the Chaldees? Just say it out loud. Bab Babylonians. One brother knows. All right? So go back. So now read verse 28 again. This is why I said it was more than just the Babylonians that came in and destroyed Jerusalem. Second Ezra chapter 3, verse 28. Are their deeds then any better that inhabit Babylon? that they should therefore have the dominion over Zion. So are our enemies, the heathens, the Babylonians, the Edomites, uh, uh, are their uh, deeds any better than Israel's, that they should have dominion over the children of Israel? Read. Because they're the ones that took us into captivity. Babylon, Assyria, Esau. Right? Read. For when I came thither and have seen empathies without number... Then my soul saw many evildoers in this, in this 30th year, so that my heart failed me. For I have seen how thou sufferest them sinning. So God, Ezra said, yo, I see how you suffer the Babylonians. They, you put them over the children of Israel. We in captivity. We in hell. Our temple is destroyed. Our nation is destroyed. Meanwhile, they living friggin' high on the hog. Read. And has spared wicked doers. And, and has spared wicked doers. So you mean to tell me the nation of Israel, we got to suffer uh, Rona. We got to suffer high unemployment. We got to suffer last hired, first fired. Read. And has destroyed thy people. But we're destroyed. Read. And has preserved thine enemies. But the other nations, they get to live till they 100 years old. You see them 102 years old out jogging. 102 years old, they out on the on the bike. Their brothers lo are loving now. They sitting out cycling. I know because I'm up north. I see them 104 years old cycling. I said, what the hell is this? We sitting up. What's the brother? Uh, there was a brother, a music brother that just passed at uh, Harrell. Andre Harrell. Andre Harrell. Just passed at like 59, I believe. 59 years old. But you see the other nations, and they they strong in age right read and has not signified it go ahead i do not remember how this way may be left are they then of babylon better than they of zion so are they of babylon are they of the other nations better than the nation of israel read or is there any other people that knoweth thee besides israel is there any other nation whom you've given your laws to outside of israel hold that uh Joel 2.27. Joel chapter 2, verse 27. And Amos 3. 
Joel chapter 2 and verse 27. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and none else. And none else. And my, uh -huh. and my people shall never be ashamed. And my people shall never be ashamed, and none else. Amos chapter 3. So Ezra had the question, is there any other people that know thee beside Israel? We just answered in Joel 2. Amos 3, I think it's verse, verse 1. The book of Amos, chapter 3, verse 1. Hear this word that the Lord hath spoken against you, O children of Israel, against the whole family which I brought up from the land of Egypt, saying, You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. So there's the answer right there. Is there so Ezra said, verse 32, or is there any other people that knoweth thee beside Israel? The answer is no. No. Amos 3 and 1 just answered that. Joel 2, 27, we just answered that. Go, to, go back to Ezra. 2nd Ezra chapter 3, verse 32. Or is there any other people that knoweth thee besides Israel? Or what generation had so believed thy covenants as Jacob? What other nation believed the covenants from the Lord beside Jacob? Romans chapter 9. Just to get to the point. I think it's 3 through 5 just to give clarity and context. The book of Romans chapter 3, excuse me, chapter 9 verse 3. For I could wish that myself were accursed from Christ. For my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites, uh -huh. to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises. You see that? Was that it? That's it. That was verse 5? Oh, verse 5. Whose are the fathers? And of whom, as concerning the flesh, Christ came. And as concerning the flesh, Christ came. Was that it? Who is over all, God bless forever. Amen. So the covenants were given to the nation of Israel. So going back to Ezra, when he said, what generation had so believed thy covenants as Jacob, there's no other nation that the Lord was dealing with. Paul just said in Romans 9 and 5 that Christ came for the nation of Israel, for the sake of the nation of Israel. Go back to Ezra, verse 33. The book of 2 Ezra, chapter 3, verse 33. So in knowing that, Lord, you only came for the nation of Israel. Lord, you, you're sending your son back for the nation of Israel. Lord, we catching hell over here. Verse 33. And yet their reward appeareth not. Yet we don't rule the planet earth like you said you, you gave to us. Read. And their labor hath no fruit. Uh-huh. For I have gone here and there through the heathen, and I see that they flow in wealth. But I'm looking at everybody else. I'm like, yo, they live in large. They got these big, nice houses. They got these good jobs. They first fired, last hired. No, what is it? First hired, last fired. Other nations is doing good. They got these strong immune systems now. All of a sudden, black people are the ones getting hit left and right. Read. And I see that they flow in wealth and think not upon thy commandments. And they ain't thinking about commandment one. Yet the earth is, yet the earth is given to them. Read. Weigh thou therefore our wickedness now in the balance. So now, Lord, you said earlier that all generations came out of Adam. All men were, were, I won't say that part yet. You, you created all men, right? You gave Adam charge over everybody in the earth. Now here we are. Babylon has come in, has come in and destroyed Jerusalem. Edom has come in and burned the, the, the temple, burned our Bibles up. It says, and I see, uh, weigh thou therefore our wickedness now in the balance. So, Lord, listen, Lord, just take a step back. Weigh our wickedness and the wickedness of the heathens in the balance. Read. And there's also that dwell in the world. Uh -huh. And so shall thy name nowhere be found but in Israel. And see that, listen, your name is not found in any other nation outside of the nation of Israel. 
Read. Or when was it that they which dwell upon the earth have not sinned in thy sight? But when is it that the other nations have not sinned in your sight? They eaten bats, rats, cats, moles, and everything else. Read. Or what people have so kept thy commandments? Uh -huh. Thou shalt find that Israel by name hath kept thy precepts. So you're going to see, Lord, that nobody outside of the nation of Israel has kept your commandments. So why are we catching hell like this? What is really going on, Lord? Now, this is a letter. Chapter 4, verse 1. Before the chapters, so I wanted to read that to put chapter 4 in context. All right? So as we go through chapter 4, you'll get a, a, a understanding of why these questions came up and why this conversation is happening between uh, Uriel and Ezra. All right? Go ahead. Second Ezra, chapter 4, verse 1. And the angel that was sent unto me, whose name was Uriel, gave me an answer and said. The answer was to the questions that were posed above it that we just read. All right, read. Thy heart hath gone too far in this world. So Uriel said, yo, your mind is gone right now. You don't went too far in the world. You asked too many questions. All right, read. And thinkest thou to comprehend the way of the Most High? And you think you're going to understand the way of the Lord? Yeah, I know you got all these questions, but even if I gave you the answer, you wouldn't understand it. Read. Then said I, yea, my Lord. And he answered me and said. So, he, so Ezra said, yeah, I will understand it. Just tell me. I'll understand. I'll get it. Read. I am sent to show thee three ways and to set forth three similitudes before thee. So Uriel said, all right, Ezra, all right. You say you're going to understand it, right? Okay. I got three questions for you. I'm going to give you three similitudes. You answer these. I'm going to give you the, the, the meaning of life, the understanding of why everything is happening right now. All right. Read. We're off. If thou canst declare me one. He said, if you, but you, if you can't tell me one, if you can't answer me one of these similitudes. Read. I will show thee also the way that thou desirest to see. Uh-huh. And I shall show thee from whence the wicked cometh, the He's, wicked heart cometh. He said, and then I'll show you where the wicked heart comes, read, comes from. Go ahead. And, and I said, tell on, my Lord. So he said, okay, tell on, tell me. Then said he unto me, go thy way, weigh me the weight of the fire. So the first question or the first similitude was weigh fire. What is the weight of fire? I actually looked it up. I don't know. I'm not sure. All right. They was talking a bunch of physics and the compression of the atoms and the molecules or whatever. In other words, they didn't know. Yeah, it, it, it looked like it. It looked like it. All right. Read. Or measure me the blast of the wind. Or call me again the day that was that is past. He said the second one is or measure me the blast of the wind. Or measure me the blast of the wind. Or call me again the day that is past. So hold this, because I sent y'all something. I didn't even play it. I sent y'all a video and a screenshot. So we're going to look at this first so we can see the affliction for Israel today in 2020. They have been dealing with a major issue there. Many people in Detroit have passed away uh, from this. We have seen just this dramatic impact uh, as well. Uh, he has created a task force to tackle the racial disparities as a result of social inequalities in places like Detroit and Flint. Uh, Lieutenant Governor Gilchrist, how are you? Roland, it's good to be here with you, my friend. Uh, first and foremost, uh, uh, let's just talk about this. You just heard Dr. Taysom Bell. You list, you hear this nonsense coming from Donald Trump that this thing might just go away. Well, vaccine, maybe we don't need a vaccine. We got therapeutics or whatever. Yet we're seeing people who are, I mean, a bus driver in Detroit, woman coughs, he's dead two weeks later. This is not, and all the people trying to talk about, you know, HIV and AIDS, look, you can get HIV or AIDS and you can live for the next 20 years. We're seeing people who are dying two weeks later. I mean, this is real. And to put this in a, on a personal perspective, I've lost 20 people in my life to COVID-19, including a cousin yesterday. I mean, this is hitting our community, the black community in particular, in ways that it's not hitting other parts of the, of the of our population. I mean, in Michigan, black folks make up 14 percent of the population, yet we've accounted for 40 percent of the people who've died, 41 percent actually, the people who've died in the state of Michigan. 
So that disparity is clear and this virus kills so quickly. And to your point, you know, we have so many people, so many people of color and black folks are overrepresented in the people who, even in the midst of the stay home orders that have been in place in Michigan and other parts of the country, have still had to go to work because you work at a grocery store, you're a bus driver, you're a nurse, you're an administrative professional at a healthcare facility, you're a utility worker, you're a first responder. And so you're out there risking your life to make sure others can stay home and stay safe. And that is one of the things that the task force on racial disparities here in the state of Michigan is looking to tackle. What kind of protections can we have for uniquely vulnerable people? And in places all around this country, that's black people. All right. So I'm not debating how many of those, especially he said he lost 20. You know, how many of those are specifically uh, Rona versus if they've labeled it something else or whatever the case is. The point is they're they're showing and telling every single day how the nation of Israel is being hit and how the nation of Israel is being affected and how that all of this is set up against the nation of Israel. So go to the next one. So that's uh, sickness and pestilence. So then pulling this up, uh, got this from a brother. <coughs> Excuse me. I think I got this one last week. I think I got this one last week. So it was talking about men and women at work and the unemployment rates. So you can see the you can see specifically who this is affecting. All right. So this is a, a national, you know, uh, real talk information. It's not like some grab that was pulled off of some random site or whatever. This is what um, officials are saying is what it, you know, uh, the projections, all right? So it's saying Hispanic women, Hispanic men, black women, black men. So we're looking at the orange and the green and you see how those lines are much higher. And especially you see uh, the orange lines are, are just shot the hell up, especially in uh, the years are at the bottom, 2018, 2019 and then 2020. So even for the last two, two and a half years, close to two and a half years, blacks and Hispanics, we've been plagued with unemployment. But then you look at 2020, especially and with the, in the midst of the pestilence and, and disease that the Lord has brought on the earth, guess what? You see we're getting hit nonstop, whether it's sickness or whether it's financially, all right? And it, it, uh, being able to take care of the chief things in life. Those are the things that are being affected, all right? So I wanted to show you, I meant to show that earlier, but that's all right. All right, you can drop that. So let's go back to Ezra. Second Ezra chapter four, verse, let's read verse six again, and then we're gonna get Job. Uh, verse five? Six. Second Ezra chapter four and verse six. Then answered I and said, what man is able to do that? When it says what man is able to do that, what man is able to weigh fire? What man is able to measure the blast of the wind or call again the day that is past? Can you bring back, what's today? Can you, do you got a time machine to bring back May 15, 2020? No. So that's what, the, that's what uh, Uriel, that's what he told Ezra to do. And so Ezra said, then said I, then answered I and said, what man is able to do that? Read. That thou shouldest ask such things of me. That thou shouldest ask such things of me. Hold that. Go to Job chapter 28, verse 20. Job chapter 20, excuse me, 8, verse 20. The book of Job. Hold up, hold up. Let me get there. And we're going to read verse 20 through 20. We're going to read 20 through 28. The book of Job, chapter 28, verse 20. Whence then cometh wisdom, and where is the place of understanding? So where does wisdom and understanding come from? Go ahead. Seeing it is hid from the eyes of all living and kept close from the fowls of the air, uh -huh. destruction and death, say, we have heard the fame thereof with our ears. So destruction and death said, we've heard the fame of this wisdom and understanding in the earth. Read. God understandeth the way thereof. God and, understands the way thereof. Go ahead. And he knoweth the place thereof. Uh -huh. For he looketh to the ends of the earth and seeth under the whole heaven. 
God knows and sees everything. Why? Because he created everything. Right? Read. To make the weight for the winds, and he weigheth the waters by measure. So he made the weight of the winds. He understands the blasts of the winds, like it said in Ezra. God understands that. Read. When he made a decree for the rain, and a way for the lightning of the thunder, uh -huh. then did he see it and declare it. He prepared it, yea, and searched it out. It says he saw it, he declared it, meaning he spoke it, he prepared it, he cr or created it, and he searched it out. Read. And unto men he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord. So he said, with all that being said, with the wind, understanding the blast of the wind, understanding the weight of the fire, understanding the lightning, understanding... Um, what else does it say? The measure of the water by measure, understanding how much water is in the sea. Those is, okay, cool. All right, you know exactly how much water is in the sea. Then what? Joe said, read verse 28. And unto man, he said, he said, with all that being said, unto you, I say, behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. So this is the same answer that Job need. I mean, not Job, that uh, Ezra needed to hear. You asking all these questions about um, things that that are uh, in the heavens. Why X is done, and why Y was done, and why is this, and why is that? Listen, at the end of the day, fear God. That's your wisdom and your understanding. Applying the commandments. That's your wisdom and understanding. So let's go back. Can I say something? Yeah, I'm sure. It's just like when the brothers on the street um, ask us about the name, but this brother ain't got no fringes. His house is not in order. He's not keeping the first commandment. So it's saying the same thing. If you're not keeping the commandments of the Most High God, then it doesn't matter if you do know the name or not. All you're going to do is tarnish it. You are tarnishing it by not keeping the commandments of the Most High God. Yep. Go back. The book of Second. Oh, sorry. Go to Psalms 135, verse 3. You're going to read verse 3 through 7. The book of Psalms, chapter 135, verse 3. Just a little bit more on creation. Praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Sing praises unto his name, for it is pleasant. For the Lord hath chosen Jacob unto himself. And Israel for his peculiar treasure. Uh -huh. For I know that the Lord is great and that our Lord is above all gods. Our Lord is above all gods, all the other idols in the world. Because there's only one God. Everything else is an idol. Allah, Buddha, Krishna, white Jesus, those are all idols. There is no other God. Read. Whatsoever the Lord pleased that did he in heaven and in earth. So whatever pleased the Lord, that's what he made in heaven and earth. So the weight of fire, the weight of, uh, of uh, the wind, the, the blast of the wind, how much water's in the sea, that's for the Lord to know. Why? Because he created it. And whatever pleased him, however much water he put in the sea, that pleased him. However fast the wind goes, that's what pleased him. All right, read. In the seas, and all deep places, he caused the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. Mm -hmm. He maketh lightnings for the rain. He bringeth the wind out of his treasuries. Why? Because that's what pleased him it, during creation, right? Who smote the firstborn of Egypt. That was it. Was that verse 7? That was verse 7, yes, sir. All right. Uh, so let's go back. Go back to Second Ezra chapter 4, read verse 7. Second Ezra chapter 4, verse 7. And he said unto me, If I should ask thee how great dwellings are in the midst of the sea, or how many springs are in the beginning of the deep, or how many springs are above the firmament, or which are the outgoings of paradise. It said, when it talks about the outgoings of paradise, that's talking about uh, what you would call like Jacob's ladder in Genesis, I think it's like 27 or 28 where the angels go back and forth from the earth to the heavens, all right? The outgoings of paradise. We don't understand the outgoings of paradise. We see, you know, movies or shows, stuff like that. Like I watched uh, this week, I was watching uh, Sonic, 
and Sonic had though his uh, rings, and whenever he threw the ring, it opened up a portal to another world. Where do you think they got that from? They didn't just make that up out of nowhere. So he was going from, he went from whatever his land was, I don't know, but he went from there, and he was he had a portal to Earth. Wherever his mind went, that's where his that's where his body went. That's where the portal went. All right. So they got that from here. They got that from the scriptures. Genesis twenty-seven. I think it's Genesis twenty-eight. And then when it says the outgoings of paradise, it's saying the same thing. All right. Read on. Uh, what's that other movie? Doctor Strange was the other one too. Yep. Doctor Strange. All right. Go ahead. Verse eight. Peradventure, thou wouldest say unto me. I never went down into the deep, nor as yet into hell. Neither it says, peradventure thou wouldst say unto me, I never went down into the deep, nor as yet into hell, neither did I ever climb up into heaven. Who? What are the three, uh, well, let me, I already put it out there. How many references are there to heaven and how many references are there? Do not yell out. And how many references are there to hell in the Bible? Go ahead. You got the, you got the mic. Yes, sir. Um, there are yes, yeah, sir. There are four references to heaven. Uh, the first one being the uh, just the sky where the birds and planes fly. The second would be the firmament above that, which would be what we would call space. The third heaven would be where the most high dwells. And the fourth heaven would be the reference to rulership on earth. Right. And, if, and the references and, to hell. Oh, to hell, there would be three references to hell. Uh, would be the grave being one, captivity being the second, and the third would be uh, what's called the, the pit. Uh, which I don't understand how to explain the pit exactly. Yes, Dig destruction or like the script, like uh, like Christ said, the lake of fire. Yes, that's the third hell. All right. So it says, so verse 8 says, Peradventure thou wouldest say unto me, I never went down into the deep, nor as yet into hell or to the grave, neither did I ever climb up into heaven. He never went into to, to any of the heavens, whether it be where the Most High dwells, the sky, whatever the case is, he never did that. All right, read verse 9. Verse 9, nevertheless, now have I asked thee, but only of the fire and wind, and of the day where, where excuse me, and of the day where through thou hast passed, and of things from which thou canst not be separated, and yet canst thou give me no answer of them. He says, I only asked you three questions. You couldn't give me an answer for now one. Read. He said, "Moreover unto me, thine own things, and such as are gone, and such as are grown up with thee, canst thou not know? How should thy vessel then be able to comprehend the way of the highest?" So he said, "The things that are on earth, you don't even understand. You, you work with fire every day, you don't understand that. You work with the wind every day, you don't understand that. And you the, live every day, and you don't understand. You can't bring the past back. Read and." The world being now outwardly corrupted to understand the corruption that is evident in my sight. He said now outwardly, he said in the world being now outwardly corrupted, there's clearly evil in the earth. If Christ prophesied that there will be wars and rumors of war, pestilence and famine in the land. He said to understand corruption that is evident in my sight. You don't understand the things that are in the earth, Ezra. So why question it? You don't, you, you don't understand basic things that are going on in your own world. Read. Then said I unto him, it were better that we were not at all than that we shouldest live still in wickedness and to suffer and not to know whereof, wherefore. He said, then said I unto him. So what Ezra said to, to Uriel, it's better, that, it's better that we just had not been born at all. Why even bring us to the earth? If we're going to be sown with wicked hearts and then die for it. Read. He answered me and said, I went into a forest, into a plain. So <laughs> Uriel answered Ezra and he said, yeah, I went into a plain. I went, in the, uh, I went into a forest, into a plain. Read. 
And the trees took counsel. And it's, this is another similitude. So, yeah, I don't think trees are talking. This is a similitude. He said, and the trees took counsel. Go ahead. And said, come, let us go and make war against the sea. So he said, the trees said, let's make war against the sea. Let's fight the sea. Let's fight the ocean. Read. That it may depart away before us and that we may make us more wood. He said, yeah, we need to get the sea up out of here because we need to make more wood. We need to make more forests. We need to make more trees. It's the counsel that the trees took. Go ahead. The floods of the sea also in like manner took counsel. So the sea took counsel. Read. And said, come, let us go up and subdue the woods of the plain. The sea took counsel and said, yo, let's go fight these trees. Trees is too much. We don't need the trees no more. We just need more water. We need more ocean. We need more sea. Go ahead. That there also we may make us another country. Go ahead. The thought of the wood was in vain. So the thought of the trees was simple as hell. Go ahead. For the fire came and consumed it. Because fire came and destroyed the forest. So you conspiring against the sea and then another element comes and wipes you out. Read. The thought of the floods of the sea came likewise to naught. The thought of the sea was simple as hell too. Read. For the sand stood up and stopped them. Because the Lord commanded that the sea only stop at a certain point. So there's no way that y'all fighting against the trees. Why? Because God is in control. I created the sea. I put the bounds there. Right? Read. If thou wert judged, now betwixt these two. So Uriel said, now if you were to judge between the sea and the, the, sea and the forest, go ahead. Whom wouldst thou begin to justify? Who would you justify between the forest and the sea? Who's right and who's wrong between the sea and the forest? Go ahead. Or whom wouldst thou condemn? Or who would you condemn? Who's wrong? Go ahead. I answered and said, fairly, it is a foolish thought. Ezra answered say, and said, yo, that's a dumb thought. To judge between the sea and the trees, that don't make no sense. Read. You had something? No, it's, um, it's, um, it's deep because what, is that, what does that um, tell you? What does that tell you right there? I know that the scripture said they were both wrong, but that lets us know. Um, let's see. Um, Isaiah. Isaiah 55 and 8. Right quick. Isaiah 55 and 8. Isaiah 55. So the Lord's trying to tell him. The book of Isaiah, chapter 55 and verse 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Your thoughts are not the most high God's thought. Why? Why the ocean is, why the trees are. Read. Neither are your ways my ways. Neither are your ways his ways. What when did I dislike you asking me? How come you um woke me up? To the truth um, at age 25. You know, how come you couldn't wake me up at age 19? You know, because you weren't ready. Because <laughs> you weren't ready. Obviously, you weren't ready. When the Most High God woke you up, that's when you were ready. Because it's his decision when you are ready. Just like with the trees, just like with the rivers, just like with the sand. Everything is a balance. Everything is a balance. If anybody else would have tried to, if anybody else would have um, tried to comprehend of that creation, it would be out of balance. If the Lord gave somebody else that creation or that power, it would be out of balance. Got to think about that thing. The way that God, the way that God created everything, is the way it's supposed to be. Time frame, everything. Absolutely. Uh, re, uh, what verse you at? Of verse 18, well, 19. Re, yeah, read uh, 19. Second Ezra, chapter 4, verse 19. I answered and said, Verily, it is a foolish thought that they both have devised. For the ground is given unto the wood, and the sea also hath his place to bear his floods. God gave the wood or the forest or the trees a place just like he gave the waters a place and gave them a job, gave them a function in the earth. Read. Then answered he me and said, thou has given a right judgment. He said, you're right. Uriel said, yo, you're right. Go ahead. But why judgest thou not thyself also? But why don't you judge yourself like that too? Understanding that you got a place too. Read. For like as the ground is given unto the wood and the sea to his floods, 
Even so, they that dwell upon the earth may understand nothing but that which is upon the earth. You're not going to understand the ways of the Lord. You're not going to understand that. You understand as much as the Lord has given you. Read. And he that dwelleth above the heavens may only understand the things that are above the height of the heavens. And guess what? The things that the Lord made in the heavens, that's what the Lord made for them to understand. He gave the stars the heavens. That's where they dwell. The sun, the moon, the stars, that's where they, do, uh, that's where they dwell in. Read. Uh, go to Sirach chapter 3, verse 21. Sirach chapter 3, verse 21. The book of Sirach chapter 3, verse 21. Seek not out of the things that are too hard for thee, neither search out the things that are above thy strength. So this is what the angel Uriel is telling Ezra. Listen, you seeking out things that are harder for you to understand. You trying to seek, you trying to get the Lord to tell you, when, when is my return? When is the end of the world? When is it? You don't know. We don't know. That's not for you to know. What's the height of the heavens? What's the height of That's not for you to know. Job just said, go back to Job 28 in the last verse. Job said it and then get Ecclesiastes 12 in the last one or two verses. Actually, finish, finish the rock first. I'm getting ahead of myself. Read, uh, read 21 and 22. Sirach through, chapter, I'm sorry, through 23. Sirach chapter 3, verse 21. Seek not out of the things that are too hard for thee, neither search the things that are above thy strength, but what is commanded thee, think thereupon with reverence, for it is not needful for thee to see with thine eyes the things that are in secret. Uh -huh. Be not curious in unnecessary matters. So he said, don't be curious in unnecessary matters, things that are not pertinent to your salvation. Read. For more things are showed unto thee than men understand. Uh-huh. The, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, be not curious in unnecessary matters, for more things are showed unto thee than men understand. You understand more in the seats that you sit now, whether you've been in a month, a year, two years, ten years, or whatever. You understand now more in the seat that you sit currently than everybody else in the world. So to try to figure out more than that or more than what the Lord has revealed to you at this point is nonsensical. Don't make no sense. It's pointless. It's vain like we read in 2nd Ezra. When is Christ coming back? We, we, don't, we don't know. We don't know. But what if, so he said noon, so if he come at 1159, that means the prophecy may not have come to pass, but if he come at 1201, we don't know. Is it going to be raining with Christ? I don't know. I don't know. So are the tanks, are they going to come right at noonday or are they going to come after Christ? I don't know. Job 28. Job chapter 28 and verse 28. And unto man he and said. And I'm saying that because these are a lot of the questions that come up. Specifically, when is the first uh, uh, tank coming? So are we going 10 feet into the earth or are we going 100 feet into the earth? So what about the 144? God darn. Read. Job chapter 28 verse 28. And unto man he said, behold. The fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. That's wisdom and understanding. You're trying to search out all the secrets and mysteries in the earth, all the secrets and mysteries of what Esau is trying to do. It's a, it's a secret for a reason. All the secrets would be revealed in the Lord's time when he decides to reveal it. Read. Was that it? Yes, sir. Go, uh, what was the other scripture? Ecclesiastes 12. Yeah, read that. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. One year, two years, three years in, these are the things that you need to be learning and understanding. You trying to figure out a, at one years old, two years old, even, though, even with all the classes that have come out, you don't have any understanding of the, the, the fourth seal, the fifth seal, the sixth seal, the seventh seal. Okay, it's not for you to understand right now. 
You can't compare your one year of repentance to 25, 30 plus years of repentance. And well, dang, if my understanding isn't there after a year, I must not get it. Well, the Lord said, go back to Job 28. Job chapter 28, verse 28. The Most High reveals understanding over time, over time, over time. Read. And unto man he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. So let's go back to Second Ezra. Uh, what verse you left off? Verse, read verse 22. Second Ezra chapter 4, verse 22. Then answered I and said, I beseech thee, O Lord, let me have understanding. For it was not in my mind to be curious of the high things. He said, okay, okay, Uriel, just let me have understanding. I wasn't trying to go, I wasn't trying to hasten to get all this knowledge and all this high understanding, right? But of such as pass by us daily, namely. He said, I'm, I'm just trying to understand the things that are happening in earth, right? Wherefore, Israel is given up as a reproach to the heathen. You, we just saw that where we lack PPE, personal, protect, personal protective equipment, personal protective equipment. We lack jobs in the black and Hispanic community. We lack adequate food in the black and Hispanic community. Lack of, lack of clean water. You look at Flint, Michigan. I'm trying to figure out the things that are going on amongst the nation of Israel. Why are we catching Rona higher than everybody else, as they say? Read. And for what cause the people whom thou hadst loved? And why, if you say that you love us, Lord, if you say that we're above all the other families of the earth, read, is given over unto ungodly nation. Why have you put us in hell or in captivity? Read. And why the law of our forefathers is brought to naught. And why the law, the prophecies of our forefathers come to naught, not come to pass. We're supposed to be above all the nations on the face of the earth. We're supposed to be a wise and understanding people. But we have piss poor education in the black and Hispanic community. We don't graduate at the rates of other nations, whether it be high school or college. Read. And the written covenants come to none effect. Mm -hmm. And we pass away out of the world as grasshoppers. And we drop like flies, whether it be Ahmad Arbery, Arbery, or, or, or Aubrey, I think I'm saying that right, Brianna, Brianna Taylor, uh, Michael Brown, give me some more. What's the brother's name? Uh, Trayvon Martin, so on and so forth. Why do we pass away like grasshoppers? Why do we got get shot dead in the streets? Read. And our life is astonishment and fear. And our life is nothing but astonishment and fear. Read. And we are not worthy to obtain mercy. Why aren't we worthy to obtain mercy? Why can't you just put the spirit on Esau to just stop killing us for a week? That's not going to happen. Read. What will he then do? Unto his name whereby we are called. Of these things have I asked. Then answered he me and said, The more thou searchest, the more thou shalt marvel. He said, listen, the more you search out, the more you're going to be shocked. Read. For the world hasteth fast to pass away. For the world hasteth fast to pass away. Hold that. Get uh, Peter's where it says uh, make the time short. Because in these last days, guess what? The world is hastening to an end. That's why, and I'm shocked every day. I'm like, it's already freaking Thursday. Wasn't it just Monday yesterday? Why? Because the world is hastening fast to pass away. You know what I want? Matthew chapter 24, verse 21. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world, to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days shall be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. Read. But 
For the elect's sake. But for the elect's sake, for the elect are the Israelites, the repentant of our people. For the elect's sake, read, those days shall be shortened. So there's a reason why the days are being shortened now. All right. So go back to uh, Ezra's. Uh, we was at verse 20. We just read 25, I think. We yep. finished 25? Search them on. No. No, no, no. Yeah, we read verse 26. Read verse 26 again. Second Ezra, chapter 4, verse 26. Then answered me, then answered he me, and said, The more thou searchest, the more thou shalt marvel. For the world haste, for the Lord hasteth fast to pass no, for away. The world, not the Lord. For the world hasteth fast to pass away, read. And cannot comprehend the things that are promised to the righteous in time to come. Uh-huh. For this world is full of unrighteousness and infirmities. He said because of the filth of this world, of evil of this generation, you wouldn't even be able to comprehend the things that are going to be in the kingdom of heaven. You would marvel. That's why uh, there's a scripture where it says, I have not seen, neither ear heard the things that I'm paraphrasing. The thing I can't never remember the back part of that. Somebody read it. Pull it and read it. I have not seen. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 2, verse 9. But as it is written, eyes have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God had prepared for them that love him. That's the same thing we read in set. Go back to Second Ezra 4 in verse 27. 2 Ezra chapter 4 verse 27. And cannot comprehend the things that are promised to the righteous in time to come. You wouldn't even be able to comprehend the things that are coming. For the righteous of our people, for the elect, for those that understand what we read in Job 28. Read. For this world is full of unrighteousness and infirmities. Uh -huh. Unrighteousness and sin, read. But as concerning the things whereof thou askest me, I will tell thee, for the evil is sown. So when it says for the evil is sown, when was the evil sown? Uh, soldier Rem. Uh, Shalom leadership. That's when uh, uh, Cain killed uh, Abel, his brother? Mm, no. No. Uh, give it to the brother looking down right now. Yeah. Shalom. Uh, when when we uh, broke the commandments of Moses with Deuteronomy in Deuteronomy, when the curses started with us? Mm. All right. Go to second Ezra three. That's why I said I didn't want to read the whole thing. Because you can read everything else on your own. Go to second Ezra chapter three, verse uh twenty and twenty one. Second Ezra chapter three, verse twenty. And yet tookest thou not away from them a wicked heart, that thy law might bring forth fruit in them. For the first Adam, bearing a wicked heart, transgressed and was overcome. And so be all they that are born of him. So after Adam sinned, that's when the, our wicked heart was sown. All right? That's when we knew sin. So go back to 2 Ezra 4 and 28. Second Ezra chapter 4 verse 28. But as concerning the things whereof thou axest me, I will tell thee, for the evil is sown, but the destruction thereof is not yet come. But the destruction of that evil, that hasn't come yet. And that won't come till when? You can just say it out loud, till Christ returns. That's when the evil of this world, that's when that's going to cease. There's going to be no more of that. No more eating bat, cat, rat, none of that. Read. If therefore that which is sown be not turned upside down. What's the that that is sown, which is sown? You can say that loud. Sin, evil, right? Read. And if the place where so they said if that evil or that or if sin be not turned upside down. 
And if the place where the evil is sown pass not away, and this generation don't pass away, read, then cannot it come that is sown with good. Then cannot the kingdom of heaven come. Christ's kingdom cannot be shared with Esau's kingdom. That's why when you read in latter chapters, one world got to go for the other world to come. Read. For the grain of evil seed hath been sown in the hearts of Adam from the beginning. And how much ungodliness hath it brought up unto this time? That's why Christ said, the love of many will wax cold. Generation after generation, year after year, the evil of our people would increase. To the point where two-thirds of the sand of the sea got to go. Now, how many, how many that is, I don't know. But two-thirds of the nation of Israel got to go. Because the evil, of the, the evil that was sown in their heart has grown so strong to the point where, listen, they, they to the point of no return. Read. And how much shall it yet bring forth until the time of threshing come? What's the time of threshing? You say that loud. Destruction, right. The time of destruction. Read. Ponder now by thyself how great fruit. Excuse me. I'll read it again. Ponder now by thyself. How great fruit of wickedness the grain of evil seed hath brought forth. And when the ears shall be cut down, which are without member, how great... No. Oh, Not number. You yeah, said my, my Bible's messed up, sorry. Oh. It's number and they. Okay. Yeah, read verse 32 again. Verse 32. And when the ears shall be cut down, which are without number... How great a floor shall they fill? He says, how, meaning, who understands what that means? Uh, bro, uh, honestly, my brother right here in the front in the, in the silver hoodie. Uh, I think it's uh, speaking about how many people going to be dead at that time. Right. How much destruction in the earth? Right. Read. Then I answered and said, how and when shall these things come to pass? So Ezra asked a follow-up question. Okay, so if that's the case and there's going to be mass destruction in the earth in the uh, during Christ's return, he said, how and when shall these things come to pass? Read. Wherefore, are our years few and evil? He said, so with that, are our years uh, uh, few and evil? So you're making the time short and the days of evil as hell, and there's pestilence in the land, and famine, and earthquakes, and wars, and rumors of wars. Read. And he answered me, saying, Do not thou hasten above the most. Hasten. Do not thou hasten above the most highest. So Uriel said, Don't hasten above the Lord. Don't go beyond the Lord. You asking when and what time and all that. Don't don't go past the Lord. Read. For thy haste is in vain to be above him. Why? Because it's, it's unprofitable. Read. For thou has much exceeded. Uh -huh. Did not the souls also of the righteous ask question of these things in their chambers, saying, How long shall I hope on this fashion? When cometh the fruit of the floor, our reward. When cometh the fruit of the floor of our reward. When are we going to be rewarded or when are our enemies going to be rewarded for shooting us dead in the street? For plagues and pestilence, for last high at first fire, when are our enemies going to be punished for that? He said, how long shall I hope on this fashion? When cometh the fruit of the floor of our reward? Who knows what the reward is? Don't yell out. Uh, Officer uh, Yakub. The fruit of our, our reward is the kingdom. Sound good? Got uh, a scripture? Romans 9. Uh, something else. Um, da, 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 da. Oh, uh, Revelation 14, 12. Something else, because it don't say reward. Okay, yeah, it doesn't. Uh, reward, reward, reward. Uh, Those are not wrong. It's, it is the kingdom of heaven, but they don't say reward. Uh, I don't have one reward off the top. Who got one that says reward? All right. Hold that. Go to 2nd Ezra 2. 
Second Ezra chapter two, read verse to the reward. Verse thirty-five. Yep, verse thirty-five. Second Ezra chapter two, verse thirty-five. Be ready to the reward of the kingdom, for the everlasting light shall shine upon you forevermore. So when he said, be ready, he's talking about re re be ready to the reward of the kingdom, the kingdom of heaven, like the officer said. And that's the scripture to prove it. All right, so go back to Ezra 4. Second Ezra chapter 4, verse 36. And unto these things Uriel, the archangel, gave them answer and said, even when the number of seeds is filled in you, for he had weighed the world in the balance, by measure hath he measured the times. So it says, by measure, God measured the times. And by number hath he numbered the times. He's measured the times. He's numbered the times. And he doth not move nor stir them until the said measure be fulfilled. And he's not going to move the time. He's not going to move the measure until the measure be fulfilled or until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. That's when Christ makes his second coming. He's got a, the Lord has a specific day, a specific time, a specific hour, a specific minute, a specific second. And there's nothing we're going to do that's going to move that, that's going to move the needle in one direction or the other. That's already set in stone. All right. We don't know. The angels don't know. Christ don't know. And we're going to read that. Let's go ahead and read it now. Go to Matthew chapter 24, verse 36. And we're going to read verse 36 through 39. Matthew chapter 24, verse 36. But of that day and hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of no were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. So the day and the hour knows no man. No, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. As soon as Christ get the word from the heavenly Father, that's when he makes it. That's when he ascends from the heavens. Like it says in Second Ezra, I think, 15. Read. He says, but as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Verse 38. For as in the days that were before the flood... They were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the days that Noah entered into the ark. Until the day that Noah entered into the ark, read. And knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. So going back to Ezra. Second Ezra read. chapter 4 verse 37. By measure hath he measured the times, and by number hath he numbered the times, and he doth not move nor stir them until the said measure be fulfilled. Until the said measure be filled, until the, the wickedness of America reaches up to the nostrils of the Lord. Like it says in Revelations 18. Read. Then answered I and said, O Lord, that bears rule, even we all are full of empathy, impiety or sin read and our and for our sakes peradventure it is that the floors of the righteous are not filled uh -huh. because of the sins of them that dwell upon the earth go ahead so he answered me and said go thy way to a woman with child and ask of her when she hath fulfilled her nine months if her womb may be kept the birth any longer within her then said I, No, Lord, that she cannot. And he said unto me, In the grave, the chambers of souls are like the womb of a woman. For like as a woman that travaileth maketh haste to escape the necessity of the travail. Okay, read, read verse 41 and 42 again, because you keep stopping. Just read it. Verse 41. Then said I, No, Lord, that she cannot. And he said unto me, In the graves the chambers, the chambers of souls are like the womb of a woman. Uh -huh. 
For like as a woman that travaileth maketh haste to escape the necessity of the travail, even so do these places haste to deliver those things that are committed unto them. The earth is hastening to deliver those things which were committed unto it, which is our bodies. Go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 and 17. That's why the Lord said this. He said, like as a woman, uh, 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 verse 41, then said I know, Lord, that can she not. The that can she not is ask of her when she hath fulfilled her nine months, if her womb may keep the birth any longer within her. No, when it's time for a woman to give birth, that baby is coming. You ain't pushing it back in. Obviously, man, you'll correct me if I'm wrong, but you generally ain't pushing babies back in once they're born, right? Once it's time for that baby to be born, that's it. Read. The book of 1 Thessalonians, chapter 4, verse 15. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. You see that? He said, what verse is that? Verse 16. Verse 16. He said, the dead in Christ shall rise first. The chambers of the grave, hold what you got. I'm going to read verse 41. Then said I, no, Lord, that can she not. And he said unto me, in the grave, the chambers of souls are like the womb of a woman. For like as a womb that travaileth maketh haste to escape the necessity of the travail. Even so do these places haste to, de haste to deliver those things that are committed unto them. Our souls, read verse, read verse 16 and 17. Verse 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Uh-huh. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. So the grave is going to give up those that have been committed to it first. So go back to Ezra. Second Ezra chapter 4 verse 43. From the beginning. And the reason, and let me say this too, the reason why that's going to happen is because that's God's will. And that's it. There's no other answer. There's no other, well, why are they going to do that? Well, why couldn't, uh, are we going to be caught up at the same time? Are they going to be about six feet above us? Or are we, that, that's, that's more than you need to know. Are we going to be caught up in packs when we first pack over here? We'll pack yeah, over is here. It, yeah. First pack over there in Ireland, the next pack over there in Canada. Is it one chariot per spirit, or are we going to all be in, this, in, in one chariot? Like, come on, man. You, 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 you're doing too much at this point. Read. From the beginning, look what thou desirest to see. It shall be showed thee. Then answered I and said, if I had found favor in thy sight, and if it be possible, and if I be, if I be met therefore. If I be meet therefore. If I be meet therefore. If I'm ready therefore. Show me then. Whether there be more to come than is past. Show me if there are more spirits to come than are already past. Read. Or more past than is to come. Or are there more in the past than there are to come. Read. What is past I know, but what is for to come I know not. And he said unto me, stand up. Ezra said, what, uh, what is past I know. Those that have come before me, my forefathers, I know them. But those that are to come, I don't know. Is it going to be more to come than I've already than the past that I already know? Read. And he said unto me, stand up upon the right side, and I shall expound the similitude unto thee. So I stood and saw, and behold, an hot burning oven passed by before me. And it happened that when the flame was gone, I looked, and behold, the smoke remained still. So Ezra saw an oven. The oven had a fire. The oven was smoking. It says, and behold, an hot burning oven passed by me. And it happened that when the flame was gone by, I looked and behold, the smoke remained still. So even after the fire passed, the smoke was still there. Read. After this, there passed by before me a watery cloud and sent down much rain with a storm. So now this is a rain cloud. The rain, he sees a rain cloud. Read. 
And when the stormy rain was passed, the drops remained still. Then so when said, the cloud left, the drops were still coming. Read. Then said he unto me, consider with thyself. He said, consider with yourself. So, so ponder on this. Meditate on what you just saw, Ezra. As the rain is more than the drops, and as the fire is greater than the smoke, but the drops and the smoke remaineth behind, so shall the quantity which is past did more exceed. No, I didn't say so, shall. It says, so the quantity which is past did more exceed. What is it saying? We are in the last days. It's not like there's a whole nother 10 generations that are coming past. Uriel told the angel, listen, this is it. As the earth, uh, as the earth moves uh, in time, guess what? There's nobody else coming. This is it. Read. Then I prayed and said, may I live, thinkest thou, until that time, or what shall happen in those days? So then Ezra asked the same question the disciples asked in Matthews 24. Read. He answered me and said, as for the tokens whereof thou askest me, I may tell thee of them in part, but as touching thy life, I am not sent to show thee, for I do not know it. So he said, listen, I'm, the Lord sent me to tell you what I already told you, what I've already shared with you. As far as your life specifically, I don't know. I can't answer that. The Lord didn't give me license for that. So go to 2nd Ezra chapter 8, verse 51. So with all those questions, all the similitudes, when y'all get a chance, y'all read the chapters in between. He gets to 2nd Ezra 8. The and book this is a, a summary, summation of what we read, part of what we read in 2nd Ezra 4. Read. 2nd uh, Ezra. What verse I told you? 51. Yeah. 2nd Ezra chapter 8, verse 51. But understand thou for thyself, and seek out the glory for such as be like thee. For unto you is paradise open. So when it says, for unto you is paradise open, what does that mean? Uh, give it to what's the brother name? Soldiers named Killian. I don't know what I was gonna call you. Shalom. I got uh, Matthew four and seventeen. That's the one I wanted. I like Luke. That's the one I wanted. Read that. The book of Matthew, chapter four, verse seventeen. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So when we go back to 2nd Ezra 8, and it says, but under, uh, verse 52, for unto you is paradise open, the kingdom of heaven is open. Christ said, repent ye therefore, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's him opening up paradise for the nation of Israel. Read, uh, go back to Ezra. 2nd Ezra chapter 8, verse 52. For unto you is paradise opened. The tree of life is planted. It says the tree of life is planted. Hold that. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 13. The tree of life is planted. So multiple meanings. It's talking about Christ being a tree of life. It's also wisdom and understanding is the tree of life. Proverbs 8, 13. The book of Proverbs. I'm sorry, 318, 318. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 18. She is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her. The she is talking about wisdom. Wisdom, read. And happy is everyone that no, retains. No, no. It says she or wisdom, read. She is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her. She or wisdom is a tree of life for those that hold on to her. Those that apply the commandments of God on a daily basis, not just in the presence of uh, uh, all the other saints on the Sabbath. Not much, not uh, in my presence only, but much more in my absence. Read. Was that it? And happy is everyone that retaineth her. And happy is everyone that retains her or endures until the end, keeping the commandments of God. Why? Because paradise is open to you. Go back to 2 Ezra. Second no, Ezra. Get us Sirach 19.19. Sirach chapter 19, verse 19. It says, the tree of life is planted. That's going into Christ when you read Revelation 2. 
It's also going into wisdom and understanding. And it's the same thing we read in Job 28. Fear the Lord. Come on. The book of Sirach, chapter 19, verse 19. The knowledge of the commandments of the Lord is the doctrine of life. Mm -hmm. And they that do things that please him shall receive the fruit of the tree of immortality. Of immortality or eternal life. So the tree of life is uh, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, immortality, or Christ. Those that keep the commandments of God and the faith of his son, Jesus the Christ, will receive that tree of life, will eat from that tree of life, wisdom and understanding, or the tree of immortality. All right? Y'all understand that? All right. Go back to Ezra. Second Ezra, chapter 8, verse 52. For unto you is paradise opened, the tree of life is planted, the time to come is prepared, plenteousness is made ready. A city when it says plenteous is made, uh, read on, read on, read on. A city is builded. Now start from um, the time, uh, plenteous, uh, plenteous is made ready, and then read. Plenteousness is made ready. A city is builded, and rest is allowed. Yea, perfect goodness and wisdom verse 53 the root of evil is sealed up from you weakness and the and the moth is hid from you what does it mean when it says the root of evil is sealed up from you mm, yep brother soldier around Uh, on, so it's, that's talking about the uh, Esau is being uh, being done away with. Uh, Esau done away with, and the two thirds have been done away. Uh, two thirds have been done away. Uh, uh, our people have been done away with the evil. Speak clearer. Yeah, you may have to slow down because I got this mask on. Yes, it's talking about like Esau is being uh, Esau is done away with. They have been uh, taken uh, taken out of the frame, and we're. Being put on, uh, back on top. I'm not hearing the back part of what you're saying. Maybe I'm not understanding. But so more than Esau, it says the root. It says for it says the root of evil is sealed up from you. So you got a scripture? Not no, sir. Okay. Go to Revelation chapter 22, verse 14 and 15. It says the root of evil is sealed up from you. The book of Revelations, chapter 22, verse 14. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life. That they may have right to immortality. Read. And may enter in through the gates into the city. Uh -huh. That city, it says, where Plinius is, is ready, a city is builded, rest is allowed. Go ahead. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. So the root of evil, the root of idolatry, sorcery, dogs, other nations, all that, it says the root of evil is sealed up from you. We ain't got to worry about none of that. We ain't got to worry about no friggin' black on black crime. That's why I say it's more than just Esau. We kill each other too. We ain't got to worry about no black on black crime. We ain't got to worry about uh, baby mamas and baby daddies. We ain't got to worry about low unemployment rates, not getting a job, not being able to afford the cheap things in life, having to eat out of a food bank, having to eat. You ain't got to worry about none of that. All of that is sealed up from us. But if you don't apply wisdom and understanding as we read on, there's something else for you. Read on. Revelations? No. Uh, did you finish 15? Yes, sir. Okay. Yep. Uh, Ezra. 53. Second Ezra chapter 8, verse 53. The root of evil is sealed up from you. Weakness and a moth is hid from you. And corruption is fled into hell. Or to, to the grave, read. To be forgotten. To be forgotten forever. There is no more death. There is no more nothing. Read. Sorrows are past. And in the end is showed the treasure of immortality. And in the end is shown the treasures of immortality. Go to Revelation chapter 21, verse 4.
Come on. The book of Revelation, chapter 21, verse 4. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. God said in the end, wipe away all tears, read. And there shall be no more no. death. Yeah, reading from the top. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. From their eyes. All tears from their eyes, read. And there shall be no more death. No more death. Neither sorrow nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away. For the former things or the root of evil is passed away. So in your Bibles, for verse 53 and verse 54, the precept is Revelation 21. You, that was all of verse 4? Yes, sir. All right. So go back to 2 Ezra. 2 Ezra chapter 8, verse 55. And therefore... Ask thou no more questions concerning the multitude of them that perish. So, Ezra, don't ask no more questions, because that's what, that's what Ezra is. It's, just, it's a, a multitude of questions, right? Same questions that we have today. Uriel expounded to him what the Lord allowed him to see. Same thing with us today. The Lord is expounding to us what he wants us to know today. He, didn't even he gave us a glimpse of what the kingdom of heaven looks like. But we don't know. It's going to be a, a thousand times better than the, the we can really only rely on movies and stuff like that that we see. Because our imaginations cannot even comprehend what the Lord has for us. If we endure to the end like we read in Matthew 24 and 13. Read. Ver, uh, where you at? 56. Read for, that. Yeah. For when they had taken liberty... They despised the Most High, thought scorn of his law, and forsook his ways. So for those that perish, Uriel said, when they, would, when they had taken liberty, meaning when paradise was open to them, when my prophets were out in the streets teaching, when they were passing out flyers, when they were passing out business cards, when sisters was walking through the grocery store and the other sisters saw the dress and the fringes and the head wrap and was like, yo, what you got that on for? Yo, we the children of Israel. You got to repent and apply the commandments. You're an Israelite as well if your father's a so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American descent. Nah, I'm good. Well, 2 Ezra 6 and 50, uh, 8 and 56 says, for when they had taken liberty... They despised the Mosai. Read. Thought scorn of his law and forsook his ways. So even with all that, even with paradise being open, even with repentance being taught in the earth, it says they forsook his laws. Read. Moreover, they had trodden down his righteousness. And they say you evil because uh, the, the way of good is evil spoken of like we read in Peter's. Read. And said in their heart that there is no God, yea, and that knowing they must die. And guess what, Ezra? For them knowing that, they understand that for, for us in 2020, our people understand as we teach, Christ is a black man. You're an Israelite. They forsake that. They hate that. God said they must die. Read. For as the things of... So this answers the question about... Well, what about my mama? What about my daddy? What about my grandmama? What about my granddaddy? God already has it figured out. But to worry about how the, the, the ungodly are going to be punished and when, that's not for you to know. Seek out your own soul salvation with what? That's it. Read. For as the things aforesaid shall receive you. So thirst and pain are prepared for them. He said, for as the things aforesaid shall receive you, just like there's a kingdom being prepared and a, uh, what does it say? A city is builded. And just like eyes haven't seen and ears haven't heard what the righteous are going to receive, eyes have not seen and ears have not heard what the destruction of the wicked and how, to how the wicked are going to be punished. Read that again. For as the things aforesaid shall receive you, so thirst and pain are prepared for them. There's a city being prepared for the righteous. A city's being built for the righteous. There's an ICBM missile and the lake of fire being prepared for the ungodly. Read. For it was not his will that men should come to naught. It wasn't God's will that they perish, that they die. He created us immortal. Read. 
But they which be created have defiled the name of him that made them. But in their own ungodliness, it says, they which, they which be created have defiled the name of him that made them, read. And were unthankful unto him which prepared life for them. And they were unthankful. We read that last week in Deuteronomy 32 or 33 when it said, Jet, Jesh run, wax fat, and kicked. And we started to forsake God. It's the same thing as for us today. Read. And therefore is my judgment now at hand. These things have I not showed unto all men. He said, and therefore is my judgment now at hand. These things have I not showed unto all men. Read. But unto thee and a few like thee. Then answered I and said. Now watch this. He said, these things have I not showed unto all men. That's so why I said earlier. We are, we are a chosen generation for brothers and sisters that are in this room right now. And brothers and sisters that are online. Why? Because God said. Through Uriel, these things have I not showed unto all men. Our people are walking around like zombies right now and are so worried about who's voting and who's not voting and uh, 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 all the other affairs of this life and cares of this world. They don't even understand that. Read verse 59 again. Verse 59. For as these things aforesaid shall receive you. For as the things. For as. Come on. For as the things aforesaid shall receive you, so thirst and pain are prepared for them. For it was not his will that men should come to naught. But they which be created have defiled the name of him that made them, and were unthankful unto him which prepared life for them. And therefore is my judgment now at hand. These things have I not showed unto all men, but unto thee, and a few like thee, then stop. Matthew's twenty, Matthew's thirteen, Matthew's thirteen and verse eleven. Start of verse ten. Matthew chapter thirteen, verse ten. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you, unto you or the few. That we read in Second Ezra 8, read. To know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but unto them it is not given. But to them, but to everybody else, what we're reading right now, the building of the kingdom of heaven, the destruction, the thirst, and the pain of the wicked, they haven't been given that understanding. Why? Because they forsake God. Why well, I'm going to give you more of what you don't want. Go back to Second Ezra. Verse 62. Second Ezra chapter 8, verse 62. These things have I not showed unto all men, but unto thee and a few like thee. Then answered I and said, Behold, O Lord, now hast thou showed me the multitude of the wonders which thou wilt begin to do in the last times. But at what time thou hast not showed me? But at what time thou hast not showed? So we don't know what time Christ is coming back. We don't know when the end of the world is. We understand the signs of the times, and we understand what we must do to be in that city that's being built, that city that's being prepared. We know what we must do in order to not fall into the category of thirst and pain that's prepared for those that forsake God. All the other questions about how big are the angels' feet and how long or the, 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 the wings, and how, yeah. it's, it's unprofitable. It's unprofitable. God gave us as much as he wants to give us in these last days to prepare ourselves for the coming kingdom. All right? We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision the tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. 
the scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.